Studios in downtown Little Rock. This is Capital View with your host, Jesse Tenor. Good Sunday morning to you and welcome into Capital View. I'm Jesse Tenor. Arkansas lawmakers say they hope to see the session wrap up in the next couple of weeks. But until then, we're seeing new battles brewing over guns and education. We'll get into those this half hour, but we begin with the major ruling from a federal judge that blocks Arkansas's Medicaid work requirement. The judge agreed with the plaintiffs in this case that these work requirements in Arkansas, as well as Kentucky, fundamentally alter the design and purpose of Medicaid. It's a policy Governor Asa Hutchinson spent months fighting for, and now he's pushing the federal government to seek an expedited appeal of the judge's decision. And while that could take months, the work requirement for now is no more. And no one will lose coverage from this point forward. Over the last six months, thousands of low-income Arkansans on the Medicaid expansion program who qualify for a new work requirement have had to report their hours to keep their coverage. After a federal judge's ruling Wednesday, that online portal has been shut down. It's a great disruption of the status quo that represents a significant investment by Arkansas. Last year, more than 18,000 people lost coverage for not complying with the work requirement. But Hutchinson says less than 2,000 of them have been re-enrolled since the beginning of the year. I remain fully committed to a work requirement. And we are in this for the long haul because we believe it is the right policy. Uh, for our Kansans who want to work and need more training and more opportunity. Right before the judge's decision came down, the Arkansas Senate approved the budget for Medicaid and the expansion program, Arkansas Works. There is strong support for the work requirement. But when it came time for the House to pass the budget Friday, it failed. And I want to bring into the conversation Michael John Gray, chairman of the Democratic Party of Arkansas, and Bill Vickery, GOP strategist. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. So, yeah, just in that story, that was a very quick way for me to mm -hmm. summarize the debate in the yeah. House on Friday over the budget. Yeah. Um, not that it was even very lengthy, but Republicans definitely made some key points here. One that I wanted to touch on was Representative Grant Hodges told the speaker ahead of time that he would be a no vote, having too many unanswered questions ahead of time. He said, why do we bother with the appropriation yeah. of DHS and the executive branch can do whatever they want? So so what did you guys think of the vote? It definitely doesn't mean that, you know, Republicans don't want to pass it, you know, necessarily. The governor and speaker already want to bring it up this week. You know, this is an issue that has been the, uh, we have our annual right of bloodletting politically in Arkansas <laughs> when we talk about uh, the, DA, the Department of Human Services appropriation, which mm -hmm. houses all the money for Arkansas Works and all of this. And the work requirement was a big issue in helping it get the supermajority uh, that it needs to pass. And so now I think, or rightly so, you see a lot of members uh, wanting to take a step back so they can have an understanding of uh, what they're really doing to appropriate the money and what's really the, the legal situation surrounding it. And then I think you can probably sprinkle a nice healthy dose of politics on the top of this too because maybe you've got some folks that they'd like to see the governor take an interest in some of their bills or legislation. And so... Uh, uh, the the, the uh, Christmas list is out, I think, for a lot of lot of legislators now because what had been seen as a pretty smooth path to passage is uh, has suddenly gotten a lot a little bumpier, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think that's absolutely right. I mean, to to the last point Bill made, he's he's correct. You've got legislators that know the clock's ticking on this session. They see an opportunity to maybe have some leverage with the governor that they didn't have a week ago. Say, Governor, I'd love to be with you, but I've got this pet project. So I think you're going to see some of that. Whether, where, wherever they fall in the ideological spectrum of the work requirement or Arkansas works in general, the point is this will create a huge hole in our budget if they don't pass it. Mm -hmm. The governor will have to go back to the drawing board on the tax cuts, the road plan, everything if this, if this thing gets torpedoed. Yeah. But bigger than that, this is campaign. This is coffee shop campaign politics. It sounds great to say we're going to make these people go to work. They're not going to get anything for free. But the truth is... You cannot have a work requirement. You cannot have Arkansas Works. And what will happen is people will go to emergency rooms instead of family doctors, and the emergency rooms will have to eat those costs, and you'll see rural hospitals and areas that don't have the strong financial backing suffer greatly without Arkansas Works in place. So this is just posturing. Everybody in Arkansas wants to see everybody that can work go to work. And sure, you want more training for workers, but this is... Uh, it's campaign. This is coffee shop politics. This is not policy. I, I don't think. I mean, we can debate the uh, the, vi the the viability of the work requ work requirement. It's awfully mm -hmm. difficult to say. <laughs> uh, we can we can debate that. I mean, I think there is a there is real value in having that associated with a program like this because it creates a value to the individual. So, uh, but we can get we, we can we can argue that one way or the other. 
Bigger point now, though, is you've got a legislative session that I think a lot of members thought would, would, uh, would conclude in maybe about 10 days from now, maybe a little less than that, uh, that now could maybe extend a little further. And so as to, to Michael John's point, that opens up a lot of other issues now. Uh, and I, I can tell you this, chief executives, governors, whether they're Republican or Democrat, like to see these legislative Absolutely. sessions wrapped up quickly. <laughs> you know, the, I think the governor's got some transformation still on the table mm -hmm. that's made its way almost all the way to the end. Then his big programs are done, and he would like to see this thing uh, uh, end quickly. Uh, and I've often said this, uh, because of the way we've set our Constitution up and the way we do legislative sessions, you would never uh, evacuate a crowded movie theater the way that we end a legislative right. session in Arkansas. So yeah, so like I right. said, the governor and the speaker, they want to bring this up for a revote either Monday or Tuesday, but then yep. you had Dan Sullivan on the House floor, though, saying that he would like this all to kind of play out in a, a committee of the whole. How would that work? Whew. Well, now, so t technically, and I know uh, Michael John can speak to this because he was a distinguished member. Uh, uh, now we're talking about having the sausage making with every member of the House of Representatives involved, yeah. not just on the committee level, which is, and, and one thing we do really well here in Arkansas, the committee process for our state legislature does work really well. That's where all the heavy lifting is done, and so the general sessions typically uh, there might be one or two controversial issues, but for the most part, good committee work by these representatives and senators sift things through, and then uh, then you kind of spit it out for the general session to uh, to deal with, and and it's sort of debated a little bit, but then moved on. Uh, to do a massive committee like this, I think, opens it up to maybe a lot of good political rhetoric too. <laughs> Yeah, committee of the whole, really what that looks like with respect to Representative Sullivan, that's a delay tactic to hopefully, um, if you're on that side of the fence, that an appeal comes through and the work requirement gets reinstalled. That's what the point is. The, the, whether you want to debate the merits of a work requirement or not, the point is we would be delaying something that would not um, help Arkansas. The point is we've seen 20,000, almost 20,000 people kicked off the rolls. We've seen a policy that worked without the work requirement and to just simply delay this for politics and that's what this is. And I don't think it'd be good for Arkansas. And frankly, to Bill's point, um, the committees can get rough enough. You put 100 people on a committee, yeah. I don't care yeah. if I agreed with 99 of them, yeah. it, it would not be best for Arkansas. Yeah. Sure, let's talk about the, what's gonna happen at the federal level too. Like we said, Ooh. the governor wants an expedited appeal. You've been critical of that, Chairman Gray, right? I, I, yeah, I think the, the bigger point is what, if you want to expedite something right now, the 19,000 people that lost their insurance because of policy that the court said was bad, we need to put those people back on the rolls. So that should be our number one priority. If we want to debate how this looks, it's fine, but the point is, have a work requirement, don't have a work requirement. What's going to happen is people aren't going to go to their family doctor when they're sick. They're going to wait till they're gravely ill, they're going to go to an emergency room, somebody's going to have to eat those costs and there's not going to be a Medicaid program or Medicare program there to help shore up these hospitals. So we're arguing over something that's hard to argue against on the campaign trail, but policy's not campaigning and we've got a real disconnect over the last few years in Arkansas, Democrat or Republican, of once we get here to make policy, we're still campaigning and that's got to stop. Bill, don't you think it's kind of the right move, though? I think the governor is looking toward it eventually going to the yeah. U.S. Supreme Court, who's kind of, in my opinion, teed up perfectly to side with him. Yeah, th th this is this is all about uh, litigating this issue all the way to the state uh, U.S. Supreme Court, uh, and make no mistake about it. And once we're once we're kind of mired in this legal quagmire, then you've got to see that play out because. Uh, the, the state legislature, the governor, everybody can support something, and as we've seen, a federal judge here or there can have a big impact on the state's future. And so uh, I, I applaud him. I think he's doing exactly the right thing. We do want to see an expedited calendar with this. This does need to be litigated quickly and efficiently. It does need to work itself up because this is a case, I believe, that the U.S. Supreme Court wants to see because now what we're really talking about here is a state's rights issue versus the federal government. And, and the, uh, the state's ability to sort of control their own destiny as far as these programs are concerned. So that's a big issue to be litigated on the federal level. Um, I appreciate what Michael John's saying. I'd be happy to get into the reason that you need to actually be looking for work while you're getting a government benefit. I think it's pretty, co pretty good common sense and, um, and has worked well for the country for a very long period of time. But really what we're talking about now is a legal battle that we need to see play out quickly. All right, well, guys, I know we struck a chord here. We're going to see if we can strike another one after the break. We'll get into the fight over school choice that's brewing in the late stages of the 92nd General Assembly. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. 
My feet hurt so bad in the morning, I couldn't even put my feet on the floor. So I had to start engineering my own arch support. So I got that, then I put this in there, this one. Finally, before I added another one of these in, I went to Good Feet, and they gave me this. So I built all this together to engineer a solution to my pain. And if I'd have just gone to Good Feet, I'd have been better off in the first place. Good Feet Arch Supports, engineered for pain relief, personally fitted for you. Sold it, sold it, sold it. Absolute Real Estate and Personal Property Auction. 8500 Edgemont Road in Grewsbury, Arkansas. Tract 1 is four and a half acres with over 300 feet of highway frontage. A 20,000 square foot commercial boat dealership in excellent condition. Track 2 is six and a half acres with a fenced and gated 92 unit boat storage facility. Offered separately pontoon boats, ski boats, fishing boats, Ford and Chevrolet trucks, Mahindra Tractor, Mossberg, Browning, Remington, and Beretta guns. Everything is sold regardless of price on auction day. Go to wilsonauctioneers.com. Uh, sold it, sold it, sold it. This is not one of those amateur SUVs. This is the SUV that defined sport utility. This is the most luxurious SUV in its class and the most awarded ever. This is the legendary Jeep Grand Cherokee. Celebrate Jeep Freedom Days with no payments for 90 days and $500 additional bonus cash on our best-selling vehicles. Right now, get $3,750 total cash allowance on the 2019 Jeep Grand Cherokee. If you're in the market for a new mattress, Denver Mattress is the place to go. Shop our factory direct mattresses and get the same quality as name brands for up to 50% less. And during the Super Spring Mattress Sale, get the Aspen 2.0 or Dr. Choice Plush or Firm for only $569.99. Check out the Summit Queen only $189.99. Or get a free $300 Furniture Row gift certificate with any Tempur-Pedic. Plus 48 months, no interest. Denver Mattress, the easiest way to get the right mattress. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Welcome back to Capital View. This week, Arkansas lawmakers got a close look at two voucher bills to send low-income students to private schools. One focusing only on Pulaski County stalled. The other designed for kids across the state advanced. If you're confused, you're not alone. This is governor's bill on the scholarship that we are. No, no, it's the Capital Promise Scholarship. Okay. Two bills created confusion at the Arkansas Capitol Wednesday. The governor backed legislation to fund private school vouchers for 500 students in Pulaski County was set to run in the Senate Education Committee, but it didn't have the votes. So a different school voucher bill ran across the hall in Senate Revenue and Tax. Senate Bill 539 creates a Arkansas tax credit scholarship uh, statewide. It would send about 400 students to private schools statewide by allowing Arkansans to get a tax credit for donating money to a voucher fund. This is one of those rare circumstances where I've signed up to speak against the bill, but based upon further instruction uh, from the governor's office that uh, we are supportive of this bill. The fund would hold up to $3 million, which the Department of Finance and Administration says the governor would account for in his budget. The other bill would take three and a half million from the governor's discretionary funds. Uh, anytime you're giving taxpayer money to uh, individual to pay for private school, that creates a problem. This would help me be able to help her get additional speech therapy and occupational therapy that she, she needs. After hearing pros and cons, the committee advanced the statewide voucher bill to the Senate. All I can say is we're not going to do it this way again. While the fate of the pilot voucher program bill for Pulaski County remains more uncertain. So I am back again with Bill Vickery and Michael John Gray. The governor has said that he prefers the Pulaski County bill, mm -hmm. but once again, it didn't run when the Senate Education Committee met on Friday. In contrast, the statewide bill has already passed through the Senate and it will be heard in the House this coming week. Um, just an interesting point, um, kind of how do you see this playing out in the House? Because that's where the similar bill from 2017 died. Michael John, do you want to start? So, so there's a really interesting dynamic in the House that um, where we see, where you see a push for voucher bills, where you see a push to move to private schools, it is generally, and it's not a comfortable discussion, but it's generally been where you've seen um, the term white flight, where you've seen um, affluent parents move, uh, affluent white parents move kids out of the public schools and into private schools. So when you run a bill like this statewide, there's a huge part of the state where white flight is not an issue. And so you'll see public schools that would uh, are not happy with creating this um, opportunity to start sending money to private schools. So even people that would um, normally be ideologically in agreement with a bill like this get real pressure from their local school district. So it's a lot tougher to pass one statewide than it would have been to pass a Pulaski County bill.
How do you see it playing out? Yeah, I, I think politics will probably be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, you know, education is one of those issues that we struggle with here in Arkansas because we try to cookie cut everything. And to some degree, we have to as a result of a federal court ruling that, that but, but it's just not all the same. What, what, what happens in, in Northwest Arkansas is very different than what happens in Southeast Arkansas. There are some areas of the state where you, it, is, it should be a crime to subject kids to these really bad, failing schools, and we struggle with, what, we're throwing a lot of spaghetti at the wall, whatever it takes to get them out, to see things work. I think, I think everyone associated with the debate here is literally has a good, pure heart, wants to see something good done, so uh, this is yet another attempt to say, look, let's see if we can't extract these kids from failing public schools to put them into private schools. I know the public school argument that that's a death spiral then because the funding decreases for the public school, the private schools. But, I mean, if it's something's not working, it's ludicrous that we continue to try to do it. And for some time now, in a number of schools throughout Arkansas, the education community has told us to hang on tight to the bottom rung of the ladder. And that's exactly where every student, student should say. So I, I, at least I applaud the legislature and the governor here for trying to do something different, for trying to make a difference. What do you think of Teague's point? I think in that Senate committee, he asked the sponsor, uh, Blake Johnson, he was like, do you, do you have any private schools in your district? Because I don't. And he was like, yeah, I don't have any either. So that, how do you? Yeah, I think that's the point. I mean, and, and I, I've heard the other side of this argument where like, we can't save all the kids, let's save the ones we can. Well, I, I disagree with that. Let's set up, maybe we can't save them all, but let's make sure it's set up where they're all able to be saved. And, and no, it's not about private schools. If it's a failing public school, then let's do better. Yeah. 3.5 million a, a year, I think, was the governor's original proposal for this pilot program. Mm -hmm. There was a pre-K in Jonesboro, Arkansas that served a my, uh, minority area, lower income part of the um, city that had to close to lack of funding. 3.5 million, just one year of the governor's funding would have kept that pre-K open for five years. That would have directly impacted the lives of those youngsters in Jonesboro, Arkansas. So I think there are programs out there that work. One in five kids out there have a learning disability. We have kids that have problems on grade level reading. We have after school and pre-K programs that aren't being funded. Let's take that money and fix those programs. Fix those programs, make them work. They're not pilots, we know they work. Instead of cutting up the budget to serve 500 kids in Pulaski County or 500 random kids around the state. I, I just think there are better ways to do it. Well, I, I disagree in this sense, in, in that we have a bigger problem with education in the state of Arkansas, and, and a lot of it has to do with just where you happen to live. And again, and I know we have been mired in the federal courts for years in the state, and that's been a pr it's been a problem for a long, long time. We concentrated so much for for a couple of decades on how we funded the schools and an equitable way to go about doing that, and you had to charge more here so that it could be equity funding there, and all of those things. And we became sort of slaves to this process of funding and per, pu per pupil costs and all that, and we really watched the performance slide in a very bad way. And I, it's not by coincidence that you see both of those state senators say, well, we don't have any private schools. It's because they do have good, thriving public schools in their district, but, too. But, but we haven't and been equitable, Bill. We've been adequate. Let's be real clear. We've, we've been adequate. We, if a kid walks into a school in the Delta, he is not walking into the same kind of facility that they're walking into in Bentonville. I, that's not I, equitable. That's a warm, safe, and dry. It doesn't work. I agree you don't continue throwing money at the problem, but maybe you change your approach. But you don't abandon a system that allows every kid that is, that is not subject to a lottery, subject to how much you can pay, subject to if there's money available to stay. Um, Ms. Green, when she was testifying, this would help my kid with speech. And, I, and then let's go beef up those programs in public schools so every kid has that but, opportunity. But, but if it's a failing public school, it's proven it's, there's an inability for, that, for the school to succeed. And I can't tell you what the reason for that is, but then we're just throwing good money after bad money. We are, we're not picking winners and losers in that case. We're just picking losers. So we'll just uh, abandon those kids, though. No, I, I think we got to try something different. And, I, and that's the point. It's like, I applaud the effort here. Is this the best program? I think there's probably not. I don't know. There could be some the, the programs that are better, but the reality is is that we've seen too many schools in this state in a death spiral downward, and the, and the students are locked inside those schools, and they can't get out. And so I, I think it is, it is, I applaud the effort for trying to do something, whether it's a voucher program, whether we, at throwing more money at a failing institution does not do its job. It doesn't, it doesn't work. That's been proven over the last 20 to 30 years. All right.
More with our panel when we come back, including their thoughts on the best and worst of the 92nd General Assembly. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. Do you want another truck or a truck like no other? One that makes people say they put what in that truck? One that has capabilities you can't find in other trucks and ushers in a whole new age. The all-new Ram 1500, Motor Trends 2019 Truck of the Year. For deals like no other, come in now during Ram Truck Month. Or get an average $15,700 in total values on select 2019 Ram 1500 Classic Models in dealer stock. At Townley, we know the demands of life can take a toll on our bodies. If your health and wellness are your top priority, a hot spring spa from Townley can improve your life. We have a spa to fit your needs. Also at Townley is the Big Green Egg, the best outdoor cooker on the market. It smokes, bakes, grills, and roasts over natural lump charcoal. See all the sizes and accessories we have to offer as the Platinum Dealer. Ah, uh, Townley. Sold it, sold it, sold it. Absolute Real Estate Car and Gun Auction, Thursday, April 4th at 10 a.m., 2414 Diamond Bluff Road in Quitman, Arkansas. With a breathtaking 3,700 square foot home overlooking Greer's Ferry Lake on four acres with four bedrooms and three bathrooms. Also selling a newly built 32 Ford Coupe in mint condition, 34 antique rare and collectible guns, including a museum quality 1866 signed Winchester. This incredible estate will be sold to the highest bidders live and online at WilsonAuctioneers.com. Uh, sold it, sold it, sold it. Airlift Concrete Experts is your go-to company for trouble with any settling concrete. We use a structural polyurethane that is injected beneath the structure to raise it back to a level state. And every job we do has a warranty. Call Mike at Airlift Concrete Experts. A lot of car companies are making SUVs, but only one makes the most awarded, the best-selling, and the icon Motor Trend's 2019 SUV of the year. Celebrate Jeep Freedom Days with no payments for 90 days and $500 additional bonus cash in our best-selling legendary Jeep SUVs. Now finance and get $4,500 total cash allowance on the 2019 Jeep Cherokee. Is your credit card debt driving you batty? One call to Consolidated Credit can lower your interest rate, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, and get you out of debt fast. Call 800-596-8048. 800-596-8048. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Welcome back to Capital View. We are back once again with Michael John Gray and Bill Vickery. So guys on this show, just, you know, back and forth since January, mm -hmm. we've talked about a lot of different topics on the show of this session. So I thought now that we're kind of in a good spot, things are starting to <laughs> maybe wind down. I kind of, I wanted to ask. What do you think the best and worst bill of the session has you know, been? You've just jinxed it. You do realize <laughs> that. You yeah. do realize Sorry. this. Sorry. And assuming that we're winding <laughs> down and all of that will be, because, you know, if, if, as some House members were talking uh, yesterday and again today, mm -hmm. that we extend beyond what had generally been thought of as maybe the 10th or the 11th or the 12th, right? Yeah. If we go beyond the 15th, it'll be one of the longest sessions, at least in my memory, uh, in, in Arkansas. So. Um, I, I'll tell you, I, what stands out to me is I think the governor is going to end up passing his transformation package mm -hmm. uh, intact. And, and the governor really, I mean, he had four big ambitious issues before this legislative session started. Uh, and with the transformation passing, uh, he's accomplished all four. And, and that is a, that is, it's not just no small feat, that is a Herculean feat uh, for a governor to get those kinds of things. We're talking about, you know, half a billion dollars in, in road building. We're talking about a, a full point cut off the state income tax. We're talking about giving teachers a pay raise. All those things are huge things. And then transforming government from however many billions of agencies that we have now down to about <laughs> 15 and trying to make it more streamlined, uh, that would, usually that happens over the course of three sessions and he's done it all in one. So uh, that, that's really what kind of jumps out at me. I think it has been interesting where you've seen bipartisan support, a break from ideology, and things that make more sense. What you saw in Northwest Arkansas, a freshman legislator out of Springdale, brought a bill to allow doctor recipients to be able to work, um, go into the nursing program, and that was mm -hmm. something Mercy Hospital up there really needed. And you saw this legislature come together. Im immigration issues have been such a wedge and such a divider amongst uh, partisan campaign, but to see the the House and Senate really embraced that, I, I think that was a big move and shows that this legislature, when it 
when they can get out of what's going on in the headlines and look at what can really benefit Arkansas, did something. I will also say, well, I don't think it's a perfect solution. There will never be a perfect solution. I will applaud the governor with coming for a long-term highway program. Now, um, we need it. I, I think it needs to be tweaked. I'd like to see the school, the roads my school buses drive down <laughs> fixed before we put another lane through Little Rock, but at least we have a long-term program. Now, as far as worse bill goes, this doesn't have to be an attack on something that's passed into law even. This can be something that you're glad to have seen fail. What would you say? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would bet that Bill and I both have a, a laundry list there. But, but right, I, I'll yeah. Where do I begin? So just yeah. some, there, there have been a, a few that, are, that were really frustrating to see. I, I think that um, the bill that never dies, a representative from Jonesboro brings every year to allow doctors not to treat patients if he doesn't agree with their uh, sexual orientation. The committee killed that, even though along uh, the comfort level or um, the, along the ideological lines, the, the would normally be something that Republican Party would tend to be against an issue that looked like it was an LGBT issue. But it was a bad bill. It's always a bad bill to say um, uh, doctors can choose not to treat someone like that. I was glad to see it die in committee. Uh, yeah, you know what? Again, I, I go back to this. I think it's always kind of a nice little parlor game to beat up on the legislature and to focus in on a, a couple of goofy things that might start in the committee. But you know why we know about all those things? Because we have this wildly open and transparent process legislatively. So you don't see a lot of those goofy things ultimately make their way into, uh, into state law because the committee process sift those out or the general debate amongst the legislative session sift those out so you know you see your state senator and you see your state representative I know it, it's it's easy from a media standpoint to beat up on these folks but they're, they're for the most part they're just good hard-working people who are trying to do the right thing on a regular basis and they deserve a pat on the back Michael John Bill thanks so thank much you. for joining us thank on the you. show always appreciate you having you on thanks, thank you and appreciate stay with us we're back to wrap it all up after this you're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning I want a glass that I actually like, so last time I paid $600. This time I went to Success Vision and got a pair that I love for $280. All in. I was surprised by how many brands Success Vision offers. I was able to get the ultra thin lenses for half of what I used to pay. The staff is really friendly and they're competent. They help me find glasses that really fit my face. I doctor next door, same day service, curated eyewear. It's just a good overall experience. You better be good in an hour for less. Come see us today, Success Vision Express. Powerfully versatile Audi Q5. Get an exceptional offer on this Q5 at your local Audi dealer. You're watching Capital View. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And that does it for today's show. Don't forget, you can now take Capital View on the go. Download the Capital View podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back with an all-new Capital View next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.